cell more and more for his silicon cells. Monocrystalline cells are the most efficient cells out there, but they're also the most expensive because they're very difficult to manufacture. We have uh, polycrystalline cells, which are not quite as efficient, but are significantly cheaper. These are the most commonly used solar cells today. Then you have uh, thin film cells, which are also fairly cheap, but they're less efficient than the uh, polycrystalline cells. So we decided to go with the polycrystalline cells because they're the most prevalent ones, they're the cheapest, and they have a decent efficiency rate. So this is our first design. This was kind of a trial run. We did a trial run because we wanted to determine the durability of our panels and come across any unexpected problems with our design. So you see here was one of the panels we built. This is a flat panel that's uh, tilted at an angle corresponding to the angle the reflector is at. We also built a bifacial panel, which, was, which uh, goes in tandem with the reflector. These panels are eight feet long, have a wood backing, and are covered in a layer of plexiglass. Um, we ran into some problems as we expected in the construction, which we uh, rectified in our second design. This is our second reflector design. As you can see, there are several major changes we made. The first change is the size of the panels. These panels are just half the size of the original ones, going from eight feet to four feet long. The reason we did this is first because the original panels warped, like Taylor mentioned. Having a shorter panel length will significantly reduce the warping. Another thing is because we decided to build a second reflector setup, we need a third, a third solar panel. And because we're uh, re reusing the original solar cells that we did in our first design, this way we don't have to purchase any new cells. And um, one more thing for the reason why we shortened, cell, shortened the solar panels is because this way they're, um, they're a lot easier to carry around because lugging eight foot panels across campus is kind of difficult. And um, the second major change we did was the backing of the solar panels. The original solar panels used just regular wood, and we noticed when we left these out for several weeks that water actually condensed through the wood, fogging the glass, even though the uh, wood had been waterproof. This new wood is actually an artificial wood made of compressed PVC, and this is impervious to water as well as being much stronger, so it also reduced warping. We uh, collected data over the course of several weeks Data, using these data loggers. These have a range of 0 to 30 volts, which is more than enough for our purposes. And you can see here a uh, sample graph outputted by our data logger. This is the voltage across a week for our original flat panel design. You can see the voltage is relatively consistent across each day. Okay, to um, determine the power output of our cells, we had to apply the voltage that we got across the resistance load. So to determine the um, optimum resistance to give us maximum power, we calculated based on the incident sunlight, and then we confirmed our calculation through experimentation. Here you can see two graphs showing the relationship between resistance and, and power output. And you can see clearly where the maximum power is corresponding to the resistance. Now I'll hand it off to Matt, who will conclude our project. So where are we right now? What is the current status of our project? Well, as was explained, um, we're going to be continuing with the construction. We are almost done and get ready to begin our actual data collection on the um, static panel, the non-flexible panel. Um, and so we just have to put the mylar on there, um, make sure a couple things are waterproof, and then we'll be able to begin our data collection next week or so, depending on our schedules. Um, and then we're going to be uh, obviously beginning to think about and further de the designs for the flexible reflector. Um, and so we've kind of broken up only relatively recently into subgroups for the construction of these different elements. There is a solar panel group and a reflector group. Um, and while working together had worked up until that point, we found that this specialization, while we're all still um, up to date on everything has been beneficial to our productivity. So, so just a couple suggestions. Um, kind of touched on a few of these things earlier, but what did we learn from this? What is the advice we can give? Um, so the number one thing is make positive relationships. You're going to be spending a lot of time with the people on your team, um, and so. Yes, it's important to be good at working together, be good colleagues, but more importantly, be friends. Um, while in our meetings, 
we like to say 100% of all time is used to things that are directly um, related to the project. This is not true. And at a certain point, we said, oh, we should improve the percentage of our meeting that is dedicated to that instead of spending time asking how each other are doing and catching up and making sure that all the friendship things are taken care of. But then we realized that that was actually an imperative portion of making sure that we were efficient the rest of the time. We work well together because we understand where each other are coming from, we joke around, and we enjoy our time together. So that's just one piece of advice that I can't stress enough. Um, and then just another thing is obviously the teams are given a mentor um, and they're an invaluable uh, asset, they're a resource. But we've also found that people on campus are more than happy to help. They see that undergraduates are taking it upon themselves to do some work and they're very, very happy to assist with that. And then just the last couple of things, um, we, just as far as our organization, um, we don't have any top-down structure, there's no boss, so to speak, but we do have a rotating schedule of people who are in charge of the uh, scheduling as far as making an, a, um, a schedule for the meeting. And therefore, that makes sure that everyone's involved, everyone's ideas come to the forefront, and um, it's important that everyone speaks your idea won't be stupid, um, and it can only help. And so then the last thing is don't fear change. Our project has gone through many revisions, many changes, and we've come up pretty much accidentally with a lot of things. And I think that the important thing is look into each new idea, and who knows if that will be the main focus later. So. Um, and then just to acknowledge a few people, um, Dr. Adam Ayes, our mentor, couldn't be here. He's right now at a conference. Um, but we can't say enough how much we're thankful for his assistance and his guidance. Um, we'd like to thank the Gemstone administration, the staff, um, and our team librarian, and then Drs. Jackson and Lowenthal for their help at various portions of this project. Any questions?